We have traveled all over Kenya and East Africa to find hardworking farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and become profitable farmers. We will see how farmers across the region can learn from experts and from each other in every way. Join us and our experts on this journey and share the family's experiences as they make these changes. Karib, to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. How can farmers in dry areas maintain and increase their production in their shambas despite climate change? Our experts right here on Shamba Shape Up may have some solutions for you. We have come to visit one such farmer who needed our expert advice. Meet Onesmas, his wife Christine, and their daughter. The sun shines brightly on the shamba where Onespas and Christine have lived and worked for 15 years. They work hard to grow a variety of crops, which they try to sell at their local shop. But recently, they have experienced a lot of problems because of drought and turned to us for some expert advice. Toto anataka karo, ngombe zinataka dawa, bengu badu atujanunua. We've come to see what we can do. And with the tent ready, it's time for us to get down to business. Tumbia Farmer is one of the best things in the world. I hope if I get what I need from the Shamba, actually I would be very happy. Because I know I love a good home. I love some different types of wealth. And the proper play. Now I don't care. Um, a bit change. You don't get my berry has a bit grown. <laughs> now, Onesmas, what problems do you face when you are farming? Uh, some my farmer do face a problem of drought. Mm -hmm. That's the most challenging problem. Last time we went very nicely. Mm -hmm. Probably last year uh -huh. when we received a good lay uh -huh. that can, could make us harvest. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from drought. We do have a problem of um, seedling seeds. We are traveling from here to Machakos to get seeds. It's only how we can get agrofet. We are not sure of the variety that needs to be planted within our area. Onesmas tells us that he belongs to a farmer group that focuses on farming to improve their lives and has recently started building a greenhouse where they want to plant tomatoes. And Christine, are these the only problems that you have, or do you have more problems? If we are taught and are able to harvest rainwater, we would grow vegetables, tomatoes, and sweet potatoes. So, Christine and Onesmas, uh, so you shouldn't worry because we came with experts and they're going to help you with your problems. Yes. Yeah, and I hope by the time we live here, you will live a better farm. Onesmas and Christine have lived here for so long but have never tested their soil. The mobile lab from Soil Cares is here to do one for them. To collect a good soil sample, take soil from about 20 centimeters deep from 20 different places in your chamber, using a auger to dig. This should be done in a zigzag pattern. Put the soil in a sample bag and label well. Then take the sample to the mobile lab. After two hours, we have the results. So, Timoth, I'm seeing you have the results of the soil test with you. Yes. Give us the results. I have the results for Onesmas Kireta. What have you been growing on your farm? Previously, I've been planting maize, beans, mm. cowpeas. Uh, your soil acidity, mm. the pH of the soil is 5. Mm. And that means uh, it is too low, your soil is acidic, and when you have an acid somewhere in your soil, it will definitely scorch your plants. So your crops will not do well. Then going to your soil fertility, phosphorus and potassium are okay in your farm, but the nitrogen is too low. Yeah, so you need to improve on that. When the soil nitrogen is low, the leaves turn yellow, making the plant weak so it cannot make enough food. It is very important to test your soil so you can give it the right boost. Following the regular soil care's advice will help you to take good care of your soil and ensure long-term soil fertility and high yields. 
This means increased income. For a long time, Onesmas has been using DAP when planting. But having had his soil tested, we knew this had to change. So, to teach him how to change his soil for the better, we have invited an expert from Mayor oh, Fertilizers to explain uh, more. Uh, Paul, uh, the results from the test are here. Yes. And as they indicate, the uh, pH is low and the uh, nitrogen pH is low. So, what are your recommendations? Maybe in the first place, Onesmus can tell us what he has been doing in the shamba. I've been planting these mains. I've been using DAP. Okay. And I've not been getting the better quality of bees that I've been expecting. Okay. So I'm not sure what I should do. Uh, one thing that I would like you to know is that uh, DAP is an acidifying fertilizer. Yes. It has been promoting uh, to cause some acidity in your soil. And that's why once the soil were unraised, you saw the, the pH is quite low. And once the pH is low, you have some problems with the availability of some nutrients. And that's why you have not been getting uh, good yields with your, whatever you plant like maize and beans. Yeah. So for now, we would like you first of all to change from uh, using DAP to what Onesmas need to do. He need to, to lime the soil so that he can reduce the acidity mm -hmm. that is in the soil. Then from there, you need to use a fertilizer which is an NPK 10.610. We call it Miyamazao 10. This fertilizer has got a calcium, which is what he usually get when he's doing rhyming. So the moment he, he'll turn to, be, to using this fertilizer, he'll stop uh, destroying his soil. So the issue of acidity will reduce. So how would you use the, the fertilizer? This is a planting fertilizer yes. that he'll need to, to be having it prior to the planting season. After the soil was analyzed, we also saw that your soil was very poor in uh, nitrogen. So you may not be able to, to harvest enough yields when the nitrogens are low. We recommend you add manure in your soil. That is when you are planting. Then you need to top dress twice. You need to top dress once the, the maize is at knee height. Mm -hmm. Then you need to top dress again when that maize plant is flowering. Mm. Yeah. And I'm sure you to dress using CN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of the raw levels of nitrogen. Oh. Yeah. So on the SAS now you have the information. When the next time you're, you're planting, you know what to do. The work at the greenhouse is moving very slowly. So Naomi and I have decided to lend a helping hand. And our Sigenta expert also drops by to have a look at their progress. After a quick inspection, Paul gives us a few tips to make sure it will be ready in time for planting. I hope it will be finished on time. While that construction continues, let us look at another problem Onesmas is having on his chamber, his cows. <coughs> Them to be a dairy farmer, and as you can see, my construction of the house of the calf is not all that good. As time goes on, change from this dairy breed and get a um, better breed for milk. Good napier grass is a mainstay of a cow's diet, but sometimes this diet could do with a boost. So we decided to introduce Onesmus and Christine to some important supplements to get their cows in tip top condition with our friends from Coopers. As a farmer, you need to define your goals. You can't do both, like dairy farming and beef farming. If you need to achieve dairy farming, mm. you need to find dairy breeds like Fresha or Ashans, which can, which can do very well here. You can still improve your breeds by breeding with the good bulls or using good cement to, to improve on them. The important thing in beef farming is preserving feeds. You can preserve feeds in different forms, like silage, hay, or can also still plant for the crops along the fence so that your animals have enough feeds throughout the year. With that, you'll be able to achieve fast growth of the animal, fast weight gain. Even if you want to sell the animal, we'll have a good weight so that when you sell it, you'll be able to get good prices for the animal. 
and I notice oh, you have good. brought us something. What is it? Pokula nutrition is a source of protein from coopers that can give your animals protein that it requires for it to grow very fast, to gain weight very fast, and be able to get a good weight that when you sell it, you're able to get good prices for your animals. My animals? Yes, for your animals. How do I feed it? Kupakula you can add in the feeds, adding every day around 20 grams per day in the feeds of the animals. Yes. Your cows and bulls need mineral supplement. You may find sometimes your cow picking up foreign bodies like plastic papers, nails, Cube. because of lack of salt. Lack of salt. The best mineral supplement for beef cows is maklik beef. Because maklik beef has about 12 mineral supplements in it. It gives your animals enough minerals that enable it to grow very fast, at the same time have high fertility. And then it also prevents what we've said, eating foreign bodies. Onesmas usually takes his cows to the deep after every two weeks, but he needs to take them more often. In beef farming, there's diseases that affect the animals. One of the common diseases that affect beef animals is ticks and worms. We are aiming the animals to get weight within a short, short period of time so that we are able to sell it very fast. But with the worms and ticks, they are going to affect the growth rate of the animals. So you need to put a program of controlling those parasites. So you need to be deworming your animals every three months with a product called Nilvam. The best thing about uh, Nilvam is that you can still deworm the pregnant animals using the Nilvam. It's very safe to pregnant animals and also safe to calves and any animal that is weak. So if the animal is weighing like 100 kilos, that I've said you give it 50 ml. So you, you check on the scale and measure the weight of the animal and give according to the body weight of your animals to avoid overdosing or underdosing. It's very important to dip your animal, spray your animal every week because the life cycle of ticks is seven days. So the moment you extend the duration for 14 days, then you give a chance to ticks to harm your animals. Because ticks may bring diseases that are harmful to your animals. This is like East Coast fever. So you need to put a program of spraying your animals every week. You spray your animals using a product called Grenade. Remember when spraying, the first thing to do is to make sure you are wearing protective clothes. Spray the cow from the back end at the tail, going forward towards the head. And remember to spray the belly and face. Yeah, so on Christmas now we need to construct some, some feeding Eating, troughs. Feeding trough. Yes. Yeah, and water trough. Yes. Ready? Yes. A good cow shed has a good floor, three troughs, clean water and a roof to protect the cows. We've been working very hard on the farm, taking a short break, fetching water. We'll be back right after this break. To receive all Shamba Shepherd leaflets, SMS the word ALL with your name and address to 30606. Oh, this is very tiring. We are still in Kalama in Machakos County, shaping up Onesmas and Christine's Shamba. We have tested their soils and advice on fertilizers. And a top animal expert has shown them how to manage their cows. But the greenhouse is still not ready for planting. Paul Mwanzia from Sigenta is back to show us how to plant high-value tomatoes correctly. Now, Paul, for this size of a greenhouse, yeah. what kind of tomatoes should Onesmas plant? Actually, Onesmas, what is required to plant here, it's a tomato which will give him a very high yield 
and you will also harvest for a long time mm -hmm. and it is also tolerant to most of the pests and the diseases. Mm -hmm. And I'm recommending him to plant Tilka F1. Good. Now that you're happy with the greenhouse, uh, how do we go about planting tomatoes? Actually, at the moment, I'm very happy with the, with the greenhouse, mm -hmm. the setup and everything. We are going to, st to start the transplanting. Yes. The most important thing is to be sure of the spacing from plant to plant. Mm -hmm. That is 45 centimeter. That is from one plant to another. Mm -hmm. And that one we can do it when the ground is almost totally wet. Yes. Another thing they are required to do, it is to do the watering in, in the evening time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, almost 30 minutes mm -hmm. per day. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, let's start planting. When transplanting tomato seedlings, Dig the new bed and make holes 15 centimeters deep and 2 feet apart. Add a bottle cup of TSP and a handful of manure to the hole and mix well. Plant one seedling in each hole. Paul, now we have transplanted the tomatoes. I think now the best thing to do is to wait for a bumper harvest. No, no, we don't do that. Eh? What we, do we do? We still have a process to go. Uh -huh. One, after transplanting, you have to do the drenching of Actara. You put eight grams of Actara in 10 to 20 liters of water, and then you do the drenching of the seedlings mm -hmm. on the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is to deal with both sucking pest and the early pest and soil bond pest. Always weed your tomato crop well and top dress with CAN after 21 days to get bigger, better tomatoes. Let us see what the cost of planting this way is. One pack of tomato seedlings cost 250 shillings. Two seed trays will cost 100 shillings each, which is 200 shillings. Fertilizer costs 2,000 shillings for the greenhouse. And of course, your labor needs to be counted. Not a bad price for a good outcome. How long will it take during the harvesting time? Actually, it only needs to take about 75 days. Yes. That is after transplanting. Uh -huh. After 75 days, you will start harvesting. Wow. And if you want to maintain what you call a continuous production curve, mm -hmm. it only needs to manage water, fertilization, mm -hmm. disease control, yes. and pest control. Then, after that, now it's upon the farmer to look on the, the key disease and the pest. The first disease to deal with, it is what we call blight. And in our case, blight, we normally deal it with Ridomil. Ridomil, it's a, it's a chemical which is both preventive, curative, and eradicative for the blight. Mm -hmm. And the farmer has to use that one more thoroughly. When, when does he apply Ridomil? After how many weeks? Actually, after transplanting, he has to take about two weeks. Two the, weeks. Yeah, at, at that point, already the seedling has established itself. Mm -hmm. Now you can be dealing with the riddle mill now to control the blight. Yes. But the best way it is to do the scouting, to identify which disease or pest is staying in the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. So as much as you've heard from the expert, I'm hoping that in 75 days, you're going to get a bumper harvest. Can, can you assure me that? I would like to need mm -hmm. to get the best product within those 75 days. Uh -huh. Yes. A lot of farmers lose their crops and animals because of the fake chemicals and seeds. Onesmas and his farmer group are not strangers to this experience. Crop Life is a group of agrochemical companies who are trying to help farmers avoid fake chemicals. Ah, uh, Evelyn, here we are, all farmers. What do you have for us? How many of you have ever bought pesticide that has not worked? Uh, you have used it and after the end of it all, it did not work. It has already been expired. The time I bought it, I never checked expiring date. Okay. The same thing happened to me. Yes. I bought one, then after spraying, it almost destroyed everything. It almost destroyed everything. Chances are, maybe you bought a counterfeit pesticide. And a counterfeit pesticide is a pesticide that you buy and you go use, and it does not work mainly because it is not the right pesticide. It is an imitation. Counterfeits. It is because maybe our farmers go buy the pesticides from a shop that is not an agrovet, a wrong shop, or maybe they buy from somebody who comes with a motorbike or a vehicle 
and they, it is not from a company and they sell to them something that is counterfeit. Now, how do you know a pesticide is counterfeit? When you look at this container that I have, it has a seal. Can you see that? Can you see that, Mr. Onesmas? Yes. And this shows that this pesticide or the bottle has not been tampered with and it shows it's counterfeit. A counterfeiter will find it very hard to break this seal or to make something like this. Somebody selling you a counterfeit, it will not have this seal that we have. Are we clear farmers? Yes. And then sometimes you find that if it is a counterfeit, the label or the container is always not looking very nice. Then when you look at your pesticide container, if this container costs you 1,000 shillings from an agrovet shop, and he comes and sells to you at 500 shillings, you'll start thinking, is something wrong, yes? So an original, you'll know from an agrovet shop, maybe costs 1,000 shillings. Why is he selling it to you at a lower price? That means he's not selling to you the real thing. So as farmers, look at for these things. The impact or the dangers of buying counterfeit, for example, one of them is you'll go spray your animals, then your animals might die because you're spraying some chemical you do not know. So let us avoid counterfeits at all times. Okay, you look at the label. An original pesticide will always give the PCPB number, meaning that product has been registered for use in this country. So for farmers, when you're going to buy, go to an agrovet shop, which has a license, which is put in front of the shop that you can be able to see properly. And make sure when you buy your pesticide, make sure you ask for a receipt. And the receipt should have the name of the shop. So that if you go home and use that pesticide and it does not work, you can always go back to the shop and tell the shopkeeper or the aggravate owner that the pesticide did not work. If he refuses, you can be able to go back to the Ministry of Agriculture or the PCPB and report the aggravate shop. It has been a wonderful shape up. The soils are fixed. The cows are happy. And now we know where to get real and correct chemicals. And Onesmas and Christine are happy and truly shipped up. It's time to say goodbye to this lovely couple and leave them to carry on the good work. Where do you get answers from? Within us. From the radio, yes. from your experts. What do was this? Now, do you know actually you can get that information on your phone? Maybe with your crops, maybe with your cows. Your cows, your you pigs. Want, yes, you mm -hmm. want to get weather updates on the markets. All this information is on the end of your phone. iShamba will send you the information you want, when you want it, for your shamba. And you can call them to speak to an expert to help with the difficult problems. All you need to do is send JOIN to 21606. And someone will call you back to tell you more. There is an expert at the end of your line. That's very good for okay. me. <laughs> to receive all Shamba Shepherd leaflets, SMS the word ALL with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just a leaflet for this farm, SMS Farmer, that's the name of the farmer, with your name and address to 30606. Shamba Shepherd is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com, select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up, to get more information, get involved in discussions and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter, at Shamba Shape Up. You can also text us on 30606. 